my dad, my father, and my Aunt Hetty told me they never, because my grandfather, Rom, came from a home where there were some, it wasn't a, you know, he was ended up being an orphan and <clears throat> raising himself and then becoming a football player, then going to Vanderbilt. But he, uh, he went to Peabody. He became a superintendent. Just a great story of an amazing man. But he never, they never saw their parents argue because my grandfather, Rom, said after witnessing his parents, he refused to argue with my grandmother, but they always did sleep in separate rooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in an so argument. I was like, well, maybe they didn't argue, but sometimes maybe they didn't talk. Yeah. <laughs> they, were, they, they actually loved each other. They both snored. But my whole point is, they were very strong-willed, and it's not that they both agreed with each other. I, I think in you know in a relationship, the the most important relationships, are, there's there's going to be great levels of attraction. Yeah, and and also the same the same aspect of repulsiveness, right? So you can look at magnetism. <laughs> no, it, it's true because if you look at it like magnetism, if you take two rare earth magnets. And you and you put two positive sides together. They're going to push. They're going to push each other apart. Oh yeah, you can't be attracted to someone and then not. My mother taught me that too. You can't be attracted to someone and not and expect to and expect to not get along with them at times. Like my mother prepared me really well. If you're going to be in a marriage, there's going to be times you're not going to like your husband at all, and that's part of loving someone. Life's yeah. not perfect. And we have we have a thing because there's. I mean, we don't always agree. Because a lot of times you're you're wrong, and uh, I, I, have to exp- right I, I have <laughs> to explain. I have to explain. have to explain to you what you've done wrong. Clayton always thinks he's right. Clayton Actually, we've never had right. one of those instances. It's usually you did this, and but you can. You, we never go to bed mad. I literally will say to Clayton, and I say this to my kids. What am I? And he knows I say this. What am I doing wrong? How can I be a better mom? What am I doing wrong? How can I be a better wife? My kids have like a whole list. In fact, I just saw Duquesne calling me. I hope he didn't need me. I have to call him as soon as I leave. But they have this huge list, right, of what I need to change and what I've done wrong. And they're right, because I have so much room for improvement. Um, every day to be a mom, you want to be the best mom you can be. But when I ask Clayton, he's always like, nothing. I'm like, what do you mean? What can I change? And this is the one thing he will say. I want you to rest. I want you to take a break. And you suck at that. <laughs> You're like, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm like, okay, this is not reverse psychology game. It's like, <laughs> I don't want you to keep working. You know, don't work so hard. Take a break. Because you know, it, it's, it's the aspect of parenting, but also being, being in a relationship of knowing you want to foster, foster all the good parts. So you want to try to eliminate as, as much of the negatives as possible. But which you know, I think we do with the kids. Like we ask them every year for their list of what they want to achieve. And then we really do try every year to support them emotionally, mentally, and physically in their wish. Oh yeah. To do things. What their, Sometimes what their they'll goals say are. they don't, they don't want to, they they give us a list of what they don't want to do, and we have to encourage them that you, they have to do it. Like you have to do certain things in life, yeah, even like if it's not fun. You have to yeah. take out the trash. I mean, you you have to. I mean, there's there's things in life that you have to do. Not everything is oh, everything's glorious all the time, you know. And it's the hard part of parenting is you. We have two generations of of young people now that had parents that worked really hard to achieve stuff and create a lifestyle and then wanted to make sure that their kids never struggled like they did. And now we have a level of entitlement in, you know, two generations that is horrific. And it, and it's what not... Two? I don't understand what you're talking Gen about. Gen Zs and um, millennials, right? And it, and it wasn't due to anything of... Um, being improper of a bad of bad parenting it was it was a disruption of philosophy of not not wanting to struggle the way you know you struggled or you know the experiences that you had as a kid you you're like well i didn't have enough to eat all the time or whatnot because you know what what have you and you don't want your kids to have the struggles that you had but a lot of times you can cripple them in that because they're they're not learning to fail and yeah, they're that's true and you you want to do that and i think the the big part you know that i've learned about being a stepdad is you have the things that you want to step in on you're like oh we have to correct this but you can you um, you taught me this. It's like you don't have grounds yet, 
right? You you can't come in and say we're you're going to do this different. You're going to do this different because you you can't, can't you can't shake up shake up their world. Um, but and especially with having a daughter, you know, which was having, what was so interesting about being in New York when Kreider told people he didn't think he would have made it without you. Did you hear him say that? And they that? go kicking and screaming the entire way. Yeah, but then like, when you I get to look back. I can't even saying that to Clayton. He, he told Emily. He was like, I would never have made it if it wasn't for Clayton being in my life. But I, I think it's the, it's the important part, especially with, with teenagers and, and young kids, but and teenagers specifically, and having the baby girl be the youngest one, where they don't want you there. Yeah. But they want you near. I don't know. Crowder wants me there. Yeah. Well, he, he wants... <laughs> He hasn't been weaned yet. Don't say that. No. I oh. love all my boys are. Oh, they they have the most unique relationship with their mom. But anybody would want that relationship if you were their mom, right? There's there's that. But I, I think the the interesting part now with teenagers, it, it, one, you you have to be willing to get in the dirt because you know they they have access to stuff that one they should not have access to. Uh, and everything is so readily available. You you try to give them opportunities, um, but as the parent, you you want to you want to be there. They don't want you there, but they want to know that you're there when they want you there. You know, so it's it's well, like just, being an that's EMT. All teenagers. Yeah, it is. It's like being an EMT. It's like I'm on call. It's like I'm gonna go do my thing, but I'm on call. So as as soon as the phone rings or son, as soon yeah, as something's like needed, Merit, she's always in her room, and then she wants me there. And she'll remember when she came home. Was it Friday night? She goes, "I'm just so hungry. Did you cook?" And it was Friday night because yeah, you like, were because Clay was like, "Well, well, you were like, let's let uh, why don't I order food? Why don't I go pick up food?" But then when you left, she was hungry, so I made her spaghetti. Yep, and then and I made her spaghetti. Did the noodles? Made it all by hand. Didn't use anything but homemade ingredients. And then I also made chili at the same time because I thought we would eat it that weekend. And I put it on a plate with everything and a note and water. And she came down and with was it with Gia or Della? Yep. And she goes, I don't have time to eat this. I have to go. I'll eat it when I get home. And of course she didn't. And that was there on so Saturday. So I made this whole <laughs> meal. You come home with the food. You're like, what are you doing? And I go, I'm Merritt was hungry. So I made it, and and you have to learn not to get your feelings hurt because. But it's yeah. it's the act, it, yeah. it's the act, and and not not the outcome, right? Uh, and th that's the hard part to learn being, the. Well, you the would tell them you loved them too, and they wouldn't tell you that oh God, they loved no. you back. You, you, but yeah, now you, they do, but they didn't. You have to sh in you know being being a step parent, you have to show it. You know, you have to, you, if. Clay, you showed it by buying them everything. Though. Well, that doesn't hurt. That's bribery. <laughs> I knew where I knew, knew where they grew up, so I was like, okay, I know one way I can get your attention really quickly. I can bribe you. Yeah, but, but I think what you did more than that, and I have to say this, just sitting and watching, is as a man, you supported their dreams and you backed their dreams, and they're each yeah. hugely in, different people. You know, you asked Duquesne, "What do you want for Christmas?" And he's going to be like, "I'll take a pen and a and a notepad." You ask Preston, and he may take a car, and you know, Kreider wants you to buy a town for him. <laughs> so and then Merritt's like, I don't want anything, right? Yep. Uh, except for, and I don't like uh, name brands, but I like Dior. That's Merritt, you know. So you're like, okay, which one, like, which which child, um, <laughs> which which path? And I think we we had to navigate. They're so different, just to. But you yeah. supported each one of them. Yeah, I, I think that it's the fun part with having kids of of being able to fig work with them to figure out their path, right? That was that was the one thing for me that I knew as a parent I would never do of, and, and having the opportunity to have my own success. You know, so I was I was able to compete athletically. I was able to basically match max out my genetic potential athletically. So I didn't leave anything on the table. I, you know, I was, I was then able to go to work and you know have the have the work success and figure out you know some of the paths that I wanted to work down you know so with your kids the goal is to help them become the best person that they're made to be um, and you don't live vicariously through them you get to celebrate their successes you celebrate and support their failures which you know. was hard for you at first I've watched you because Crowder was such an amazing athlete but that's not what he wanted to do he wanted to sing yeah. And he wanted to do business. And he was into music. And, you know, Merritt, Kreider's the, 
and the boys would say this, they all were great at sports. They were all like super mm-hmm. achievers in sports, but Kreider was really the most athletic. Merritt was the most uh, talented from a music perspective. And then you have these two kids that don't choose their number one talent for what they want to do with their life, which as a parent, you're right. The thing you have to learn is, well, this is not my life. And yes. so they get to choose whatever. They and you try to you try to coach it of you know trying to explain it's like look don't quit these things because i guarantee you you know when you look back later in life you're gonna go man i could have done that i don't think you're right though you you encouraged Kreider, who had been in sports his entire life and played on every advanced league there was traveling throughout the country and never truly loved it mm-hmm. you can't make a kid no love you something can't they no you love. and and that's the like, thing Kreider is you can't doesn't force get to hit. Do i mean you can't make a, a kid just like you didn't like get getting a hit in football you can't make a kid love something they don't love. I and mean, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, and like if, in, you know, in that instance where you've got, you know, his father played football. He, he played elite football. He was an All-American. He played, you know, and then was drafted to play in the NFL. And you go, okay, that mindset, that history is my son is going to play football. And if your, if your son doesn't like playing football, if he's not committed to it, then he shouldn't be playing. And, and that goes with anything, right? If you're not, if you're not willing to commit to it, and yeah, but that I watched you struggle with that because you really wanted that for him, and I understand. I that want the, I want them to see You know, you want them to be successful, and where where you see where you see talent, you're right. You want to help develop talent, yeah. but you do everything you can to help develop the talent. But if the desire doesn't meet the talent there you can't teach desire right no i mean i had i remember watching duquesne and he was not the most athletic of the kids but he was so driven he was like me i was not the most athletic in my family but i didn't want to ever lose and he was the most determined and i was the most determined right so you put me on a sports field i'm just determined to try my best 100 percent of the time so you end up and and that's you know where he went in college playing college sports but you can't make them and that's that was what was i think so great easy for me I never wanted a child that was an athlete. I never wanted a child that was a musician. I just wanted to help my kids be whatever they wanted. Yeah, whatever to be. I never wanted a child that was in business. I just thought whatever they want to be. And if it, if and this is a true statement as a mother and I hope every parent hears this. I I would not be disappointed if my kids decided they wanted to um, be a waitress for a living if that's what they wanted to be yeah, he knows be a that good about person. Me. just be if good that's what people. you now i would say you're going to work really hard and you're not going to make a lot of money but if that's what makes you happy you can't determine what makes someone else happy and i think that's where i saw you change with the kids to really support whatever they wanted yeah you i mean that's the part of parenting right is par- parenting's all about growth as it is being a kid but kids it, grow it, parents it's hard grow, being a step you, parent because when you have little kids you raise them so they come out of your body if you're a father you see them when they're little you hold them when they're crying you go through everything you go through going to kindergarten and then when you get to the age of middle school which is where you came in yep and high school with four kids it is not the easiest time it's an interesting it's interesting time frame to walk for into. a stepfather to come in it's really hard it was hard i and seeing you fight it i remember thinking what would my what would i be like if these weren't my kids and i didn't know every single thing about them because i raised them it's just it was an extremely hard period but you never quit you just kept kept loving them keep taking punches yeah, but it's the fun part and now there's a lot of punches <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard oh my gosh right. it was so hard the, the for fun you. part I is watching the, is watching the process of you know now we're we're nine years into the journey and you you get to see what work has has created you know the the one part i love the most of watching some of my my character traits that are now in them and and seeing those That's those sure. pieces yeah. those sure. pieces come out and those those little pit, bits of influence because there there's a difference between nature and nurture both are very very important um and and understanding that you know family's not just blood no. right there's a difference between being family and being related yeah. right and well, I think, yeah. you know, who gave us the best example of that, um, God's son is, you know, Jesus. And mm-hmm. We have, there's different people that have different viewpoints on that, but that's what the Bible teaches us. And 
he, you know, he had a physical father and he had a heavenly father. And I always tell people when you look at a stepfather, that's a father that maybe genetic, you know, like Joseph in the Bible, yep. that he was the father here that served here with Jesus. Do you think? Do you think that Joseph ever looked at him every once in a while when Jesus was younger, if he got out of line, and he's like, "Who's your daddy now?" I don't think. <laughs> no, no, maybe not. No, I'm not sure Jesus got out of line, but if he did, I don't think he said that. <laughs> I think that's a Clayton Thomas statement. I'm not sure that Joseph. I've used that a couple of times. The I'll, carpenter. I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, when when the teenagers want to argue with you, and, um, you do that. You can always you can always pull that card, and you know you can stop an argument real quick. Uh, it's like, who's your daddy now? And you're like, that's not funny. Like, yeah, it was. I hate it when he does it. <laughs> I think it's so. I'm like, no one likes that. No one. Stephanie's like, no, no one likes it's that. It's like that does not work. It's like, well, if it's done under the right no, pretenses. No, not really, Marty. No one likes that. It's traumatic. No. Oh, I kind of laughed. Okay. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. That's awkward. No, we wait. No, we can't approve that message. No one. No one approves the message. Cut that out. Yeah. Cut, no, okay. Well, they might leave but, it just to show how. Um, no, but this is it, it's it's the journey of. Of, of really watching them watching them grow and knowing knowing that you're there for a resource i mean the greatest part now is being able to work with the kids right so we've you know duquesne duquesne works with us Kreider's learning learning to you know start start his journey preston did work too. preston did he work still with us works with you on some of the companies but then then left left the primary business because he wanted to do do his thing and you know He's i've been able to support him greatly at yeah that. yeah because they've they've built some of those core principles you know that that they've been able to learn from their mom that they've seen from us that they've also learned from you know our, their upbringing and well, I mean, I was going to say, if my kids didn't learn to work, then I did something wrong because they saw, they saw me work really hard my whole life. And so um, I remember I did a, a paper on this in school about what is the biggest indicator of boys being successful. And it's the mom working is one of them. Yeah. One of the most powerful. Is yeah. Because, moms working. because they because a lot of kids will see and people think that a stay at home mom is um going to make kids happier but here's the truth a mom that loves her kids and sincerely does whatever she can her whole life to to love her kids is what is going to make ha kids happy because there's plenty of mothers that stay home mm -hmm. that don't watch their kids or pay attention <laughs> to what, what they want we won't cite sources <laughs> yeah and so i i say it all the time just because there's someone that stays home and, and so the research supports that that yeah. that like even single moms versus married moms kids do better of course if typically parents stay together however not in a bad situation and um the truth is if, if they feel love they're gonna they're gonna be yeah. fine they're gonna be just fine they have to know i don't know how my grandfather ron made it i mean there's some people that never really get that true love that unconditional love and for me i don't know how that feels because i was definitely not my mother's favorite um i'm still not i was i don't top know three i don't know top three there was only three of us i was not i don't think i was probably my father's either although he kind of took me everywhere hunting and all over the place but i knew they loved me i was just different you know i was really different i'm sure they were like what is wrong with her but you kind of stood out yeah i was a little different i don't think i stood out i think i just was not i didn't fit into you're gonna you're gonna be raised and you're gonna get married and you're gonna you know be a nurse or teacher and stay home i understand why they wanted that because then i would have peace and be able to raise my kids It'd be simple but it was never my dream my dream was to be a missionary actually and travel around the world and help children that not, was my dream not to be miss november not to be miss november that was never my dream nope. but it ended you ended up on the calendar <laughs> <laughs> the pike calendar <laughs> in at college. south alabama <laughs> Um, a shout out to South Alabama. That was a fun school. I went to that school, by the way, because my boyfriend played baseball, and we had worked at Ridgecrest. So Susan and I both went there. Her boyfriend was there, too. The Glovers, I think their grandfather was a governor. <laughs> and then we, um, we really chose the school, though, because you had Fridays off, 
and you could go to the beach. And, and you it got was a two party weeks school. for Mardi Gras. We had Mardi Gras off. That sounds horrible, but that's really late. Why start we went on there. Monday, so you really went to school like Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday part time. If I went to school, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If I went to school. When the beach is that close. When you're right on the water, it's really hard. And when there's beer and crawfish and shrimp, you're not really thinking school. And when you're outside in that weather, somehow I just didn't make it to class. What is a bushwhacker? Okay. Okay. We're ending this because everyone has to go home. But a bushwhacker to end this is what Jimmy Buffett used to serve and his sister used to serve at their bars in at, in the Gulf Shores, he's from Mobile, Alabama. Yep. He went to the Catholic school there, and it is a combination of five or five to seven alcohols, and ice cream and bananas. So you have Kahlua and Bailey's and vodka and Captain Morgan. Stephanie's over here. She knows yeah. she's from New Orleans. Yeah. I can't stand it when I go to places and I say, "Do you do you make bushwhackers?" And they look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, it's the best drink in the world. No, you can only have one or two. But it's so good. So what I did was I didn't schedule Monday for classes, and I didn't schedule Friday. So I had classes Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in school. And this Susan did the same thing. She sometimes would be like, well, I need to take this class. And I would say, that's not important. I'm not taking it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just take the easiest class there is and graduate. Yeah. But anyway, we have to end because this will be another topic. We can do a whole topic on bushwhackers in college if you want to oh later. yes there's uh there's many college stories that could there's come. a lot of college stories we won't tell but we can tell a few of them i don't know they could go local i did sleep in a ditch one night there was that <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you much to come <laughs> that was not a story you want to tell your kids <laughs>